sometimes, you know, we don't understand uh, some of the things that are going on and around the world. And a lady was telling me this morning about a move of God that's happening in, uh, over there in America. And uh, this particular church, it's just flourishing that they can't, can't contain it. And uh, they're, they're meeting in all the different places because each week they seem to over, overflow it. But there is a move of God. And how many people know that God's interested in a move of the Spirit? There's a lot of things that we might know. You see, I didn't know, and this it's not spiritual, but it's very, very real. I didn't know about this little sleepy town that you have to go down a hundred uh, kilometers of dirt track to get to it, but there's, there's, there's dewfish that big, and there's grunter that big, and there's mud crabs that have got nippers, like, uh, what do you call it, um, Mr., uh, Mr., Mr. Universe. And, uh, but I didn't know about that. But, you know, you, there's some things that perhaps you don't know about. You may not know about the love of God. You may not know about what God's made available to you. You may not know that God is real. You may not know. There's a lot of things that we've got to learn, amen, but it's a wise person that when you find out a truth, that you go after it. And that's why I'm going to go up that 100 k's of dirt track, man, and go to fishing. Hallelujah, shaka bundi. God is an amazing God. Do you believe that? And, and he loves us with a passion. He loves us so very, very much that he sent his son to die for us. And he's not finished with us yet. I like that song because it said, if you're not dead, there's still a chance. And you know, I've got a favorite saying, don't die till you're dead. A lot of people die before they're dead. Vision dies. Dreams die. But I tell you what, while we've got breath in our lives, we're going to keep uh, believing. Amen? We're going to keep trusting. We're going to keep, keep, uh, just keep on believing. Good to have John and Betty back from out west. They have been, hey, good on you guys. We got everything done so quick today because they were here and, and we, I had a time to have a little sit down. Amazing, amazing. So anyhow, Father, we just thank you today for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you that you're very, very real. You're very, very real to us. Your love, your mercy, your grace, your passion. Very, very real. And we want to honor you today, Lord. We want to honor you and, and just come before you with open ears, open hearts, open minds, that you might be able to penetrate sometimes the, the hardness of our hearts, penetrate sometimes the unbelief that gets around our lives. But by your Spirit, you'd penetrate and go right down deep on the inside and touch us, my God, because we all need you. I need you, Lord. I need you every moment of the day. I need you every moment. Amen. And for that, Lord, we just ask you to come again. Touch us in Jesus' name. You know, God wants to draw us to his pre in his presence. He wants to bring us to himself. And sometimes I, I just get blown away at, at my thinking, and then I get a revelation of God's thinking. He is the God of abundance, isn't he? He's a God of amazing, amazing grace and mercy. We come today, this day as Mother's Day, and we've got many amazing mothers in this church. We have some mothers that have had babies in natural, and uh, that's good, that's amazing, but we've got some amazing spiritual mothers in this church. You know, that's, that's so important to be a spiritual mother. There are mothers here today that are, praying and praying and praying and believing God and just believing for a move of the Spirit, believing for churches to come together, believing for, for God just to have his way. And, you know, today I uh, just want you to feel so welcome here in this house. Amazing, amazing mother, spiritual and natural. Today we want to honour you all, and thank you for your contribution. I got Tom's problem. I'm not. I'm not even going to try to say that word again. And service in this house. <laughs> you got an anointing, Tom. It dropped on me. I can do all right on my own. I don't need your help. Okay. I remember one time I was preaching and. It's about, I'm not going to say what it was, but it was about a, a verse that says, There's therefore now no condemnation 
and I made a mess of that. <laughs> I'll let you work out the details. <laughs> oh, man. The Bible is very, very real. It's very, very good. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, the Bible is full of women, great women, women of uh, honor, women that, that knew God. But one of the things I want to say about these women, I'm going to share some things about women in the Bible, but they all had one thing in common, is that they knew that God was their answer. Jesus is our answer, amen. Jesus is the answer for any situation you're in today. And sometimes that's hard for the natural mind to comprehend because we, we get all messed up and we've got all these thoughts and goodness knows what else. But, you know, in the Bible, the, the prophets of old, they were the voice of God. They, they were God's representatives. So when they spoke, it was like as if God was speaking. God was speaking to them and, and God spoke to them. And, and this woman that had a situation, you'll find the story in 2 Kings chapter 4, this woman, there was a situation in her life and, and uh, you know, she could have just got angry, got bitter, got whatever it was, discouraged, disappointed, negative, and things like that. But instead of that, she realized that there was one that could help her. She realized that, that there was a, a source that she could go to. And I think that that is one of the greatest mysteries in the Bible that you and I, as we discover particularly the people outside of church, that do not, they think we're a bunch of weirdos or goodness knows what. But we, we understand that there's, there's a greater one, that there's a source that you and I can come to. And we've heard many, many testimonies of people that have been healed and delivered and set free and people that have been in bondage, where the bondages have been broken, where the chains have been smashed, where, where people have found freedom and liberty, people that that were, you know, just lost, then all of a sudden joy floods their heart again and that peace and, and whatever it might be that they were looking for. And this woman uh, came to the prophet. In other words, she's coming to God. She's coming to that, that God person, the, God's representative. And a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditors is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Then Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Look, this story is packed with, with knowledge and, and ways for you and I to, to get hold of. But first of all, we've got to come to him. First of all, we come to him with a confidence with an understanding that that is not some God up in heaven sitting on a cloud playing a harp, waiting for I don't know what, but he's a God that is very, very interested in you, a God who is very, very concerned for you. And one of the great truths about that is that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, that he might die on a cross to set us free. And the harp has not been told about the cross. You preach on the cross all day and all night and still not reach the depths and the, and the, and the magnitude of, of what God did for us and how much He's made available to us, how much He wants to touch us. And here's this woman, she comes and, 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 and she says, you know the situation, there's a, there's a situation and the creditors are coming. Of course, the creditors are the enemy, Satan himself. And the first thing that the prophet or the man of God said is, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? You can come honestly before God today. And, and you know, I, I've heard some people, and sometimes it's very, very simple, people that might be going through a trauma in their lives and, and, and they hear about Jesus and, 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 they, and, they, and their mind is scrambled. They don't know what's right or what's wrong, and they, they lift up their hearts to God. You see, if you make that first step to Him, even if you're ignorant, even if you don't really know the fullness, even if you don't know 
everything that God can do for you. I certainly didn't. But when you make that first step, when you make that first step, and I've heard people cry out, if you're really, really true, if you're really, really God, will you help me? That's how, that's how big God is and yet how small God is, if I can say it like that. That is interested. What can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Nancy's on the phone. Hallelujah. <laughs> what shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? You see, what do you have? What have you got? How can I bless you? What, what, what have you got so I can use what you've got? It's not just gonna, money's not just going to float out of heaven for your circumstance. There's no money tree in the backyard. Lo sis here grows a pretty good capsicum. <laughs> Saw the pictures of it the other day on whatever you call it, Facebook. What, what have you got? What do you have in your house? And sometimes when, when God talks to us like that, we think, I, I've got nothing. I, 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 I am a nobody. I, I've got very, very little. I've really got nothing to offer. But, but God is bigger than that, isn't he? What have you got? What have you got? She said, I've got one small pot of oil. One small pot of oil. That's all I've got. You see, what you've got right now, if you allow God to magnify it and, and enlarge it and multiply it, it's more than enough. Amen? And that's the problem. We, we, we the church, many times stay back here saying, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I've got nothing to offer. But then if you can break through that and hear the voice of God, what have you got? All I've got is a small pot of oil, and I'm going to give it. I'll, I will give it. I will do whatever you want me to do with it. And, and then God can take what you have, and he will multiply it, and there's more than enough for you and your sons. What, do, what can I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, My, your main servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And he said to her, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Go gather, not just a few. Go gather, go gather. To me... And I like to put myself in that situation. Here's a woman that has got creditors coming to take her two sons to become slaves. He's talking to the man of God. I, I don't know what she was expecting, but he says, go borrow vessels. <laughs> I would have said to him, have you, what, have you, what are you on? <laughs> Don't, don't you understand? I've got a predicament here. I've got a problem here. And you're asking me to go out and borrow empty vessels? Don't. <laughs> you see, God said this, my ways are not your ways. <laughs> I, if he would have said, go borrow vessels that are full of oil, <laughs> Okay, I'll do, I can do that, but go borrow empty vessels, not just a few. So she goes out and she goes and gathers as many vessels as she can. And then the prophet says, start to pour the oil. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of times when, 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 when I think, when, especially when God starts to talk to you, it, it's very difficult to... To grasp it, because sometimes what that, that, that sounds stupid. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't. It doesn't even sound spiritual. <laughs> Tell me something spiritual. <laughs> something that I, you know, I can get the doodads and everything like that. But what? What will? What will? People think, 
What, what will my sons think? If they see me with this, I've got all these big pots all around me, and now I've got this little jar of oil. <laughs> Please, can anybody else see the picture? Eh? And she starts to pour. And it just keeps going. And she feels, and, and, oh, and this is all, all of a sudden, faith starts to rise. <laughs> And then she gets to the end. She says, get more pots, and there's no more pots. You know, some people think, oh, the woman never had enough faith. She should have got more pots. <laughs> oh, <the> silly woman. <laughs> when she went and told the prophet what was going on, he said, go sell the oil, pay your debts, and what is left over, what is left over, you'll have enough to live on. Amen? You'll have enough to supply all of your needs according to my riches. Hallelujah. Not according to your need, according to your riches. You see, God is a God of the impossible. God is a God of miracles. He, he performs miracles. He does miracles. She had a responsibility when she heard what God said to do that sounded so stupid, not even spiritual, go gather pots. She had the responsibility to gather the pots. And though it not only looked impossible but stupid, she began to pour out of that small jar into the large pots, and she filled them all. What an amazing story, amen? What would, we, what would the guys have done? I, I praise God today for Nancy, because without her, I don't think I would have ever got born again. She was the one that said to me, I want to go to church. I said, you can go to church. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> She said, but I don't want to go on my own. I want to go as a family. Hmm. You should have seen me going to church. When the service was over, I would go out and sit on the front fence, which was only about three meters from the main door of the church. It's still there. I often go and sit on the fence. If ever I go, to the, go up to Townsville, I go to that place and I sit on the fence. <laughs> Have a bit of trouble getting up there these days, but anyhow. I get up on that fence and I take my tobacco out of my back pocket and I'd roll me the thickest one I could. I'd light her up and blow smoke over everybody as they're walking through the door, out through the gate. It was right beside them. I didn't realize what I was doing. I was just trying to say, I'm really not one of them. <laughs> but one day, that sneaky God got me. <laughs> I often say, when people come into the church and that, and I say, uh, they say, well, just come to have a look. I say, be careful, the banks are slippery. Because I know about that because I slip right in. <laughs> I slip right in and got born again. But I thank God for women, you know what I mean, that, that have got that, I don't know what it is. See, you, you, you might see yourself like that small pot of oil. She said, I've got nothing but a jar of oil. You might think you're a nobody and have nothing to give. That's the greatest trick of the devil. As you begin to pour out of your love for the Lord and share your faith with others, God himself will pour back into your life. You see, that's the law of God. That's how God works. We can't just sit on our blessed assurance and, and, and even just pray all the time and, 
there's also a responsibility. There's something there that you and I have got to do. Start to pour out your life. God says, as you do, then I'll give back. It's a law. It's a, it's a way God works. It's the way God operates. Give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running out all over. You, you might think, well, that's money. That's, it's got nothing, very little to do with money. Giving is a lifestyle. Giving a smile, amen. Giving a bit of joy, giving a bit of whatever it is. But just giving, is a, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's, it's the way God operates. God operates in mysterious ways, amen. He's an amazing God. In 2 Kings 4, 8, there's a, another woman. I'm not going to read this for time's sake because I, I don't really want to spend a lot of time today. I'll, I want to be able to release the church a bit early so we can, everybody can go and do their things. You can read it when you go home, 2 Kings 4, 8. There's a woman that acknowledged as she saw the man of God go past. She, there's something about her, about him that caught her attention and, and, and she realized that, that he was a man of God. So she said to her husband, she said, how about we build a room and, and we make room for him and we put a table and a chair and this and that, a lamp and so forth in there so that when he comes by, he'll be able to come in and rest. And the man of God did that many times. Then the man of God, and please, these stories are here so that you and I can draw from them. So you and I, they're not just there because God had nothing else to do one day, so he wrote this story. The things that you and I can glean, and friends, that first story that I said, there's so much more in that, so much more. You could preach about that for, for forever just about. But this woman acknowledged that the, that the man of God walked past and, and she made room for him and he came in. And the man of God called his servant Gehazi. And if I can say it's like this, Gehazi represented the Holy Spirit at this particular time. Called his servant in and, and said, this woman has been so good to me. She looks after us. She, she cares for us. She's, what, what can we do? What can we do to bless her? Does she want, does she want me to go to the king or to the magistrates or somebody? Is there an issue? Is there anything I can help her with? You see, God wants to help us. He wants to meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He, want, he, wants to, he wants to help. And so Gehazi said, no, I don't think she has any of those needs, but she has no child. And so the man of God rose up there and then he walked out and, and, it, and he ministered to this woman and, and said, woman, you know, in the in next year or so, you're going to come for, you're going to bring forth a child. And she said, don't you mess with don't you mess with me. Don't, make, don't you make promises that you cannot keep. Can I say this? That every promise in this book, God is able to do. Amen. Every promise in this book, God is well and able to do. Don't, don't, don't do something if you're not able to do it. Don't, don't just kid with me. Of course, in 12 months' time or whatever it was, this woman brought forth a child and the child began to grow. Went out in the paddock with her, with her husband and, and worked out there. But one day he had this pain in his head and, and, he, and he collapsed and they brought him to the, to, back to the woman and, 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 of course, he died. She, friend, it's our attitude. I honor this woman. She knew where to go. She knew where to go for her answer. She knew, though the circumstance looked so crazy, called out to a servant. She said, get me a donkey. <laughs> I've often got the saddle birth marks right now. <laughs> 
She got on that donkey and off she went. People saw her and her husband saw her and said, is it well? Blah, blah, blah. She said, it is well. She didn't allow negativity. She didn't allow anything else to get inside her. She just knew that there was a man there that had made her a promise and that this man was well able to fulfill whatever he said. And so she's going back to the source. The, the Gehazi came and, and said, how is it? She, she said, it is well. <laughs> she got, then the, the prophet said, there's something going on here that I don't know about, I don't understand. And then, of course, that we, we know the story. And as you read the story yourself, you'll find out that, that this woman, uh, Elijah, he went in there and he laid on top of him and he breathed into him and, and, she, and he gave this precious, precious son back to her. See, Jesus is the answer today. We've got to know where, we, where to go, amen. You go to the source. You go to Jesus. She didn't allow her, her mouth to, to get negative. She didn't allow her mouth to, to say things that, that she wouldn't be able to get back. She didn't allow her mouth to, to, to rant and rave and say how, you know, all this. She, she just kept a positive attitude. I'm going to the source. I'm going to where the answer is. That's where I'm heading. Uh, she said to the guy, don't slacken off. Just get this thing going and, and, and just get me there as quick as you can. Amen. And of course, we know that when she got there, she just uh, she got a miracle. You've got to know where to go. You've got to know where to go. Go to the source. Go to where all the answers are. Amen. She could have said, I thought, I thought it was too good to be true. <laughs> Anybody ever said that? I know I, I knew it wouldn't last. She could have said a lot of things, but no, she just said, it is well. You know, faith in God will cause even those dead things, gifts, etc., to come back to life again. And I believe, and I honestly, honestly believe that the church, the now church that we know in Australia, has gone to sleep. The gifts have been laid aside. Some of them have laid dormant. But I want to tell you, I believe with every fiber of my being that the wind of the Spirit is beginning to blow again. It's beginning to blow again. It's beginning to blow again. Hallelujah. And there's a stirring. There's a rustling. There's, a, there's something there that's happening in the mulberry trees. Amen. There, there's something there that's going on, that, and, it's, and it's not just a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing, and it's touching the hearts of people, uh, spirit people, amen. And they're beginning to rise, and they're beginning to pick up those gifts again. They're beginning to operate those gifts. I honestly believe we're going to see healing. We, we're going to see amazing deliverances. We're going to see the mighty hand of God, because God needs to be seen, amen. Most Times it's just in the four walls, but we've got to go out there. We've got to be the voice. We've got, to, we've got a responsibility to show forth the glory, to show forth God. I, I've, say, I've said it already today, don't die till you're dead. While I have breath in my life, I want to continue to pour my life out. Pour it out, pour it out. It's got a lot to do with attitudes or belief systems. Or, what, or, you know, what, what, you, what you say. There's another woman in the Bible, and, and she had an issue of blood for 12 years. See, we've got to know the source, and we've got to know his ability. That we, you and I have got a responsibility. We, we can't, and I know I've said it a lot, we can't just sit around waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting. We've had so many prophetic words. We've had so many things that God has spoken to us about. And I praise God for our Tuesday night prayer meeting because we lay those prophetic things out before us and we start reminding and we start speaking into it. We start speaking into it. We, and today, because of the way that we've been praying, the way we've been speaking into it, we've got a row of young people in the back row that we've never seen before. Amen. Because God is a God of impossible. Uh, and whatever he says you can have, you can have. 
And as you speak into that thing, as you speak into it, it's what you say. And this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. I believe that it's going to enlarge. I believe it's going to multiply. I believe there's a, more is going to happen. Amen. And this woman who had suffered and lost everything that she had, and, 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 and she came into the press, and, and she spoke these words, and she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. The disciples who had been with Jesus didn't understand it. When Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? I wonder today if, if there's something inside of you that, that you might have a myriad of things going on around your life. But I'm wondering this morning, if somehow or other on the inside of you this morning, you might reach out and say, if I can but touch him today, if I can but just reach out and even say, cry out to him and say, if you're really, really real, will you touch me? If you're really, really real, will you, will you help me today? If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Because you see, when you do that, when you press in, when you go through all the barriers, and, and it wouldn't have been easy for that woman. She would have had to go through the negativity. She would have had to go through, you're unclean, you're unworthy, you shouldn't even be here. You're, you're a nothing, you're a nobody. But she pressed in the harder. She pressed in and she kept on pressing in until she touched the hem of his garment. And friend, the moment that she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus stood still. Because something happened in the realm of the Spirit. The Bible says virtue flowed out of him. This is not a natural doctrine. This is not a natural phenomena. This is not a natural thing. This is a spiritual thing. Amen. It is not by might. It is not by power. It's by my spirit. I'm not talking to your head. I'm talking to your spirit. You can but touch the hem of his garment today. You can be made whole, totally delivered, free. Hallelujah. Amen. Totally, 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 totally. What an amazing God we serve. What an amazing God. He is an awesome God. This morning, this morning, I ask you, that, that woman had that, that issue for so long, but this particular day, this day, one day. Oh, let that day be this day for you. Amen. Let this day be this day for this church. If I may touch the hem of his garment. She'd had that issue all that time, but Jesus is passing by. That day, that day, Jesus passed by. He's passing by today. He's walking past your life today. Will you reach out to touch him today? Oh, would you let this day be that day? Amen. That day, virtue flowed. Oh, my God. Are you going to be the one today who reaches out? I'm not just talking to people there that may not know Jesus. I'm talking about people that might have known Jesus for a hundred years. It's time to reach out, amen. Time to stir yourself. It's time to hear God say, what have you got in your house? It's time to keep our eyes focused on the source because Jesus is the answer, amen. Jesus is the answer. Above him there's no other, hallelujah. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Father, today, in Jesus' name, I pray by your spirit you'd come. Pray, Father, that you'd, you'd indelibly print things into, into our hearts, into our minds, my God. You'd bypass our natural thinking, and God touches deep on the inside. Right now in this atmosphere, Father, that people would surrender to you and open their hearts Lord, we'd say we want to be part of this end-time revival. Christians, it's time to rise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Christians, it's time not just to sit around and wait and play games and play church. We played church too long, hallelujah. The church, the, oh my God, the church is an amazing place. You carry, you have 
So much to give. Rise up, rise up, pray, believe God. Oh, my Father, my Father, right now, just pray, bow your heads, and just to let the Spirit of God come into this place. If this morning you're here and, and you know that, that you need just that, that touch from God, there's a, there's a heart inside you. You might have known God. You might want the Lord. You, you've known Him in the past like Nancy knew, knew the Lord when she was a young girl and when she was a little kid. And when, when she was an old, older woman, uh, I think she was 26 or something like that, when a need was in her life, she started to reach out to the source, started to reach out to the source, she said, Neil, I want to go to church. I, I want to get back with Jesus. I want Jesus into my life. It didn't take all that long before we both surrendered our lives to Christ. Never been a day like that day. Hallelujah. An amazing day. And every day now is a better day. Things get better. And you're in this place today, and, and there's a stirring. There's a, you, you realize... Oh, there's a, I can see right now, oh man, I can mess up my whole life. Might mess up my plans. But oh, friend, yield. Yield to Him. If you're here in this house today and you want to surrender your life to Jesus fully, totally, 100%, give me a wave. You want to come back to Christ. You want to come back to Him. You want to come back. Say, I want to come back to Jesus. I want to come back. I want to come back quickly. Slip up your hand right now. Slip it up. Let me know if you're here today. Just slip it up. Slip it up. You know you're, you're not right with God. You know you're not right with God. You know it. You know it. You know it. Would you slip up your hand today? Would you acknowledge that today? Would you bless you? Anybody else quickly, slip up your hand. Come on, join that one. Join that one. Join that one. Boy knows the Lord, but he, he knows that, he, that he, he needs help. He needs help. He knows God, but he needs help. You might need help. God bless you. You can put your hand down. Anybody else quickly, come on. You, you know, you've known the Lord, but you need help right now. Quickly, slip up your hand. Quickly, slip it up right now. Slip it up. Slip it up. Quick, quick, quickly, 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 quickly. Come on, you two guys. Come down Come down the front here. I want to pray for you. Come on down, both of you. Come on, that's okay. That's all right. You need help. It's good to cry out to help. Man, you've got no one. I don't, I, how many times I went out the front? I went out there. I was a, I, I had, they used to put a seat out there for me. <laughs> I just sense that there's some other people here right now. Hmm? You need to come too quickly. You need to come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come, come. This is, this is good. This is real. Bless you, darling. Is there anybody else? Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. So if you need prayer, if you need a touch from God, if you need anything there, I, there's a couple of people that I'd like to pray for, somebody there that's got a condition in your eyes, right behind your eyes and uh, gets into the back of your head there. I'd like to pray for you. There's also somebody here with a condition across your shoulders. I'd love to pray with you if, you, if you'd like. And uh, there's other, somebody else here too that you, you, you've been suffering for a period of time with uh, nausea, and uh, I'd love to minister to you as well. So just come and let's believe God. Amen. But others, if you uh, need to go, God bless you. And uh, have a great, great day. Amen. Have a great day. Amen.